Kendall Jeers. Jacobus Hermanus Pieters Jeers, commonly known as Kendall Jeers, is a South African conceptual artist Jeers lives and works in Brussels, Belgium. Biography. Kendall Jeers was born in Leendale, a working-class suburb on the East Rand outside Johannesburg, South Africa, into an Afrikaans family during the time of apartheid. At a young age he understood that his education, morality, family values, religion, and life in general had been very carefully constructed to erase itself as a social habit. At the age of 15 he ran away from home and an abusive alcoholic father to join the anti-apartheid movement. The apartheid government had a policy of compulsory conscription for young white men from 16 years old and refusal meant either a life in exile or six years imprisonment in a civilian jail. The only way to postpone the conscription into the South African Defense Force was to continue studying so in 1984. At the end of his final year at Queen's High School, Jeers applied to the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg in order to avoid conscription. At art school, he met fellow artist Neil Godholz, and in 1986, they formed the performance art group Coos with Marcel Van Heerden, Gise de Villiers, Megan Kruskal, and Velile and Zazonk. Coos sang post-punk industrial music ballads based on Afrikaans protest poetry by poets like Rick Hatting and Chris Kenwick. Although they were included on the Volvri compilation album, and performed at Die Eerste Afrikaans Rockfees, Coos performed only one concert of the Volvri movement tour at the University of the Witwatersrand. Coos disbanded in 1990 following the suicide of Neil Godholz, on 16 August 1990, at which University Jeers became an activist working with National Union of South African Students and the End Conscription Campaign, and in 1988, was one of 143 young men who publicly refused to serve in the South African Defense Force and faced a six year prison sentence as a direct consequence, so he left South Africa and went into exile as a refugee. Jeers returned to South Africa as soon as Nelson Mandela and other political prisoners were released from prison in 1990. He began working as an art critic and curator to earn a living whilst practicing as an artist. The first work of art he created back on South African soil was called Bloody Hell, a ritual washing of his white Afrikaner Boer body with his own fresh blood. Referring to what he calls the perversity of my birth, the birth of my perversity, he asks the question, can one ever escape history and ancestral guilt? The essay begins with the words, I am guilty. I cannot hide my guilt, as it is written all over my face. I was born guilty, without being given the option and acknowledgement that one of the artist's ancestors, Carol Frederick Christoffel Jeers, was a Boer at the Battle of Blood River, and so the blood that he washed himself with was an exorcism of his ancestral, cultural, and religious heritage. Challenging everything his Afrikaans family and Boer culture stood for, he changed his date of birth to May 1968 as a political act, reclaiming his identity, by destroying the destiny of the person he was born to become, Jacobus Hermanus Pieter, in order to give birth to himself as the artist Kendall Jeers. The act of washing his skin in his own blood was a reference to the line, My head is bloody, but unbowed from the poem Invictus. Whilst incarcerated on Robben Island prison, Nelson Mandela recited the poem to other prisoners, and was empowered by its message of self-mastery. Jeers chose May 1968 in recognition of the world's last great utopian revolution and numerous anti-apartheid protests at the Venice Biennial resulting in a boycott that lasted until 1993. The date also refers to the Situationist International Movement and the concept of detournment in which ultimately any sign or word is susceptible to being converted into something else, 
even into its opposite shortly after his return from exile, Alvy Sachs wrote a seminal essay called Preparing Ourselves for Freedom, in which he calling on his fellow ANC members to desist from saying that culture is a weapon of struggle. In response, Jeers wrote an article for the Star newspaper in which Jeers reversed the challenge by saying that the struggle is a weapon of culture. He wrote all good art is political in the sense that it challenges the ideologies and cultural prejudices of both the viewer and the artist. Political art must be perceived less as a set of predictable subjects and more as a critique of social representations believing that there can be no poetry after apartheid jeers used the alienation he felt in relation to his cultural heritage to create a new practice that he called relational ethics in which he used his experiences as an activist as a weapon to challenge the minimalist aesthetics of conceptual art. In this period, he began using police batons, razor mesh, broken glass, gunshots, danger tape, and punk style Xeroxes in his art. In 1995, he created Self Portrait, an iconic work that consists of no more than a broken Heineken beer bottleneck. The label remains attached to the broken glass and reads imported from Holland. The superior quality. In 1999, Jeers took up a one-year residence at Solitude Palace in Stuttgart, and from there moved to Leipzig, Berlin, Vienna, and finally settled in London. Following a deep sense of disillusionment in the art system, he decided to take a 12-month sabbatical in which he did not create a single work of art. His plan was to instead read and think about art, life, politics in search of a justification to continue making art. He was, however, already committed to a solo exhibition curated by Nicholas Buriaud and Jerome Sands, so he promised that he would exhibit the conclusion of his year-long research-driven sabbatical at the Palais de Tokyo. The resulting exhibition was called Sympathy for the Devil and consisted of a single matchstick titled The Terrorist's Apprentice installed in the Empty Museum. During the opening on the 1 June 2002, a vandal destroyed the matchstick, but it was replaced the following day Jeers moved to Brussels in 2003. Methodology Curator Clive Kellner described the 1988-2000 period of Jeers' work as political, but the artist does not like this label because artists who announce who they voted for are no better than politicians or missionaries. Instead of declaring what he believes, in he prefers to create art that embodies a moral ambiguity that invites the viewer to confront what they believe in and this way, there is a dialogue and a transformation. He refers to this as terror realism, which he defines as artists who had grown up in countries that had been torn apart by war, revolution, conflict, Crime and genocide created work according to an entirely different set of aesthetic principles. In place of the cool, detached, passive showroom aesthetics of the White Cube Shrine, their work was invested with a reality principle that sought to disrupt the viewer's pleasure more than satisfy it. Jeers is known best for using a variety of images, objects, colors and materials that signal danger in an attempt to examine power structures, social injustices, and establishment values. Jeers also uses words as a means to explore the power relations and coding of language the borders of semantics in communicating complex contradictory emotions and states of being. Jeers creates disarmingly simple situations, like a single matchstick in an empty museum or a broken bottle of beer, but the simple reading quickly disintegrates within a complex forest of signs. He often compares his work to the scene of a crime in which the viewer must reconstruct what has happened and then try to find their own connection to that understanding. The working process is defined by risk and experiment, and yes, sometimes I have glorious failures, but sometimes what remains is something like the scene of a crime, both attractive and repulsive, and the viewer is the detective that must put all the pieces together and decode my intentions. Most of Jeer's artwork showcases in visceral, 
raw emotion where words fail. He tries to create pieces in which viewers have to accept responsibility for their presence in the work of art. They are always free to walk away or move on, but if they decide to engage with work, then the process becomes an active one. Gier's works create a physical presence and about performing a specific effect rather than depicting it. Gier's centers his work around the limits of experience like ecstasy, fear, desire, love, beauty, sexuality, violence, and death, because he believes that these extreme experiences are beyond our ability to express in words. The knowledge, fear, and theories of that experience are central to most cultures around the world. He is drawn to the taboos that govern our lives because they are beyond our abilities to control, no matter who we presume ourselves to be, rich, poor, illiterate, educated. Lost Object Lost Object is an art historical term coined by artist Jeers to set apart his practice of using existing objects, images, or materials. The term is a protest against the term found object popularized by Marcel Duchamp. The play on words contrasting lost with found is a semantic strategy often used by the artist. According to Columbia University professor Z. S. Struther, he rightfully rejects the use of the term found object since it grants megalomaniac power to the last person in a chain of hands contributing to a work's biography. I prefer the concept of the lost object because it suggests that there is a history and a context to the object, image or thing before it is reduced to a work of art. In his 1996 essay The Perversity of My Birth, The Birth of My Perversity, the artist wrote that modernism was built upon precisely the same essentialist Christian philosophies and beliefs as colonialism and that in rejecting colonialism and its protege apartheid, I thus have no option but to also reject every element of its ideological and hegemonic machinery, including its morality, art, and the culture, and so therefore the concept of found object is rejected as Gears compares the modernist concept of the found object with the colonial act of discovering a country or a continent that effectively erases centuries of history by disregarding the indigenous people who live there. By the very same logic Duchamp's act of finding erases the history, ownership, provenance, use, value, and context of an object, whereas the designation lost object implies all former histories and context in the spirit of Guy Debord's concept of detournment. The lost object releases the work of art from the artist's ego, with an open source participation in the history of the design manufacture, use, ownership, and function of the object through symbolic upcycling. Gears argues, that the found object cannot exist outside of the quarantine of a white cube gallery so Duchamp literally transformed the gallery into an aesthetic zone comparable to hospitals and toilets in which every form of reality is purged like the contaminant of a virus. Body of Work Early Work His early work was influenced by the ideas expressed in his response to Albie Sachs and the idea that the struggle is a weapon of art. Strongly influenced by the ideas of Leopold Setter, Senghor Giers used his experiences as an anti-apartheid activist to interrogate the reading of conceptual art from an Afrocentric perspective. Writing about African conceptualism for the groundbreaking exhibition Global Conceptualism, Points of Origin, 1950s-1980s at Queen's Museum, Akwiwi and Weser wrote in African Art, Two things are constantly in operation, the work and the idea of the work. These are not autonomous systems. One needs the other and vice versa. A paraphrase of an Igbo idea will clarify this relationship. Where there is something standing which can be seen, there is something else standing next to it which cannot be seen but which accompanies the object. In its material basis, African art is object-bound but in its meaning and intention it is paradoxically anti-object and anti-perceptual, 
bound by the many ways of conveying ideas whereby speech or oral communication our highly valued Jeer's art is an activity located not inside the solitude of the studio but in the rough and tumble world of actions of political social and cultural engagement in what he called a dialogue between art and life his early work was marked with political violence and the violence of politics his weaponized art by charging conceptual aesthetics with the ethics of political structures of control that explored the moral and ethical contradictions of the apartheid he developed a visual vocabulary characterized by provocation using a refined black humor that upcycled charged materials like concrete security fencing danger tape broken glass shards police batons handcuffs profanity pornography into works of art by appropriating historical events and ideas he focused on questions of relationship between individual and society it was in this context that jeers joined every political party in the period before south africa's first democratic elections from the extreme right wing to the communist party in this way he expressed his doubts about the fetishization of party politics. He invented the system of calling his work title withheld in order to politically shift the convention of calling art untitled. Title Withheld Refuse was a 1993 sculpture that consisted of black refuse bags in which the political verb to refuse was transformed into the aesthetic garbage refuse. A 1995 work title withheld boycott was a room in the Johannesburg Art Gallery designed by colonial architect Sir Edwin Lutyens that had been emptied of its apartheid collection and the bare room exhibited in the spirit of the void by Eve Klein. With this attack on the institution and by extension, some of his fellow artists, Jeers asserted that art could refuse and resist the ideology of museological practice. Thus, the seemingly empty room questioned the pervasive modernist hunger for market-oriented post-colonial objects. As an amplification of this debate, title withheld boycott returns us to the vault of the museum, to its ethnographic storage rooms and holding docks, where art and cultural objects await dispersal into the myriad networks of institutional recontextualization. It is precisely what has been cleared and evacuated from the gallery's walls that is the subject of this intensely aware intervention. He was one of 27 artists that represented South Africa at the 1993 Venice Biennial curated by Achille Benito Oliva, the first time since the 1968 anti-apartheid boycotts that South African artists had been invited. Whilst in Venice, he rose to infamy as the first artist to urinate into Marcel Duchamp's Fountain Duchamp. Self-Portrait Self-Portrait is an iconic work created in 1995 that consists of no more than a broken Heineken beer bottleneck. The label remains attached to the broken glass and reeds imported from Holland. The Superior Quality Jeers believes that every object is more than the sum of its physical parts, and is instead the embodiment of an ideology, and a portrait both of its maker and its consumer. The broken bottle of Dutch beer represents the values and morality of the Boers, convinced that apartheid was a legitimate political system. In rejecting his own ancestors and their totalitarian ideologies, Jeers symbolically breaks open the beer bottle in order to set himself free. Like his ancestors, the Boers, Heineken beer was imported into South Africa. The work was exhibited in New York on an exhibition called Simonai We Are One in 1996 and happened to be in the cargo hold of TWA Flight 800 that exploded as it was taking off on 17 July 1996. So Jeers transformed the unique original into an edition of 12 comparing himself to two six-packs of beer. Jeers describes the work many people think that I chose Heineken because I actually like beer and more than that, drink Heineken, and I have to correct them. 
Identity is very complex, especially if you are a white African and self-loathing is part of your cultural inheritance. In 1990, when Mandela was released and apartheid delegislated, our identity as South Africans was up for grabs. Our history, culture, morality, faith, values, and everything that one might normally take for granted, as identity was in my case illegitimate. As an African, I consider myself an animist and respect my ancestors. But those ancestors are Dutch. The broken bottle of beer speaks of identity as violence, the self as broken. The spirit the bottle once contained has been drunk and all that remains is the garbage of history. Holland Cotter's The New York Times Review said every now and then, political art delivers the kind of epiphany it's supposed to, the one-liner idea that sends out unexpected ripples. Such is the case with a piece by the South African artist Kendall Jeers in this stimulating show. He simply places an art book caption for Marcel Duchamp's conceptual joke air of Paris beside a news photo of police administering oxygen to a victim of a terrorist attack. In the face of this simple reality check, Duchamp's academic gamesmanship collapses into irrelevancy. Later work Following his year-long sabbatical in 2001-2002, his work increasingly took on a spiritual dimension influenced by alchemy, Kabbalah, esotericism, animism, tarot and tantra, whilst maintaining his commitment to activism. He would later define this evolution as animistic activist. The shift has been misinterpreted by some as a more poetic phase. Here, Jeers transferred his incendiary practice into a post-colonial and increasingly global context, suggesting more universal themes like terrorism, spirituality, and mortality. As such, the artist's life and work can be said to constitute a living archive composed of political events, photographs, letters, and literary texts that serve as a source of inspiration and represent a continuation of his oeuvre. Selected Work in Public Collections Frick 1988, Johannesburg Art Gallery, Johannesburg, South Africa. Hanging Piece 1993, Sites Museum of Contemporary African Art, Cape Town, South Africa. T. W. Baton's Circle 1994, Maxi Museum, Rome, Italy. T. W. I. N. R. I. 1994, Centre Pompidou, Paris, France. Tears for Eros 1999, Chicago Art Institute, Chicago, USA. T. W. Scream 1999, Smack, Ghent, Belgium. Oitilover 2003, Castello di Ama, Chianti, Italy. Acropolis Redux, The Director's Cut 2004, Emst, Athens, Greece. Monument to the Unknown Anarchist, 2007, BPS 22 Collection, Charleroi, Belgium. Mutis Liber 953, 2014, Mucca, Antwerp, Belgium. Curatorial Projects. Jeers curated his first group exhibition in 1990 whilst working as a journalist for the Virai Week Lad newspaper. The project was conceived as a newspaper exhibition in which artists were invited to create a work of art specifically for the double-page center fold of the weekly newspaper. The exhibition was published on 14 December 1990. In 1992, Jeers curated AIDS. The exhibition at the Johannesburg ICA inviting 17 artists all under the age of 30 to respond to the AIDS pandemic. Artists included C.J. Morkel, Wayne Barker, Belinda Blignot, Joachim Sconfeld, Mallory de Kock, Julie Wadge, Diana Victor between 1993 and 1999 years worked as the curator and art consult. The collection focused on artists and works of art that were central to the anti-apartheid movement spirit dating from historical artists like Gladys M. Gudlundlou, 
Gerard Secoto, Walter Battis, Robert Hodgins, Ezran Leggy, and Durant Sihlali, contemporaries like Sam and H. Lynn Jeffwa, William Kentridge, and Penny Siopes. In his introduction essay to the book Contemporary South African Art, the Jenker Collection Jeers explains the core of the collection installed in the lift lobbies consists of a group of ten works that have been curated thematically to embody the spirit of the time between Nelson Mandela's release from prison on 11 February 1990 and his eventual election as president on 27 April 1994. This period is unique and will in all likelihood never be matched in South African history again. It was a moment during which the old nationalist government acknowledged that after 46 years of illegitimate rule, their presence in power would soon be over, together with everything they had stood for. At the same time, the African National Congress ANC refused to accept responsibility for the country until they had been democratically elected to do so. Finding itself between opposing governments, together with the destabilizing efforts of covert governmental organizations, the country fell apart socially, politically, economically, and culturally. The legitimacy of the old laws was challenged and contested without new laws having yet been written to replace them. The period was characterized by widespread violence, the proliferation of pornography, prostitution, drugs, gangs, confessions, denials, accusations, murders, abductions, and assassinations. Yet, at the same time, the air was filled with the spirit of renewal, euphoria, and optimistic hope. Concerning the prospect of the first democratic election, the book included essays by Akuiwi Enweser, Alu Agwaib, Colin Richards, Elza Miles, Ashraf Jamal, and others. In 1995, Jeers resigned from the curatorial committee of the first Johannesburg Biennale in order to make an application to curate his own exhibition. His choice of title Volatile Colonies was an amalgamation of the two main themes Volatile Alliances and Decolonizing Our Minds. The exhibition positioned itself in opposition to the curatorial concept of Magicians de la Terre on which the biennial was based. The artists, which included Janine Antoni, Haney Armanius, Carlos Caitlan, Ilya and Emilia Kabakov, Philippe Parano, Paul Ramirez Jonas and Rokrit Turavanijo were selected by their experiences and relationships with the languages of art rather than by their ethnicity. Although able to survive in the center, they are always aware of their own intrinsic differences in relation to that position. No longer content to be tolerated as victims, they are seizing control of their lives and art by setting trends rather than following. Their ethnic origins and experiences are transformed from an initial disadvantage into a weapon against the languages of art. Social Sculptures Strongly influenced by the social sculpture concept of Joseph Buys and the African art principle of African art as philosophy based on the ideas of Leopold Sanger Gier's conception of art evolved with the logic of an expanded field. He believes that art is he result of life and life is the source of art. It's very important for me that life comes before art, that living and exposing myself to things is a process that happens in my life and in my world. This process is absolutely necessary because I don't believe that I can make art if I have not experienced those things. On the 25 April 2003, he launched R.E.D. Sniper, a performance art music collaboration with Front 242 musician Patrick Codneys. The project was an attempt to find a hybrid space between image and music, working from video clips that were looped, remixed and composed simultaneously from both visual and audio points of view. The sound was composed at the same time the image was edited, creating an audio-visual mix as much about music as it was about video. In 2009, whilst preparing the work stripped bare for his exhibition, 
a guest plus a host equals a ghost jeers was struck by the violent beauty of the lead bullets as they opened up like flowers when they hit the glass. He cast one of the exploded bullets into eighteen yellow gold earrings for Elisabetta Cipriani wearable art and called the social sculpture within earshot in 2020 jeers designed the A.S. Velasca kits of the season 2020-21. Manifesto in the preparations for a retrospective that would begin at the South African National Gallery and travel to House der Kunst Jeers fell out with the curators. He fell into a deep depression at the time brought about by the injustices of an art system that cares only about market ranking and price tags. The art system has no use or value for vision, integrity or consequence. For a second time in his life, he found himself unable to create. He began a list of reasons that eventually evolved into a manifesto. In trying to come to terms with the illegitimacy of his identity, as a working-class Afrikaans white man, Jeers authored the political erotical mystical manifesto, bringing together his early political activism with a spiritual consciousness. Exhibitions Kendall Jeers has participated in many international exhibitions and biennials, including the Johannesburg Biennale 1995-1997, Havana Biennale 1994, Istanbul Biennale 2003, Taipei Biennale 2000, Lyon Biennale 2005, Venice Biennale 1993, 2007, 2011, 2017, 2019 Dakar Biennial 2018 Shanghai Biennial 2016 Sao Paulo by His first retrospective exhibition was called Irrespective and toured in 2007 from BPS 22 Charleroi Belgium to Smack Gent Belgium, Baltic Center for Contemporary Art Newcastle, Musée d'Art Contemporain de Lyon Lyon France, D'Atuo Domus Artium Salamanca, Spain and Mark Trento, Italy. The second retrospective was organized by Aquiwi and Weser in 2013 at the Haus der Kunst Munich, Germany.